Splatoon is a very colorful and odd shooter from Nintendo. Odd because the game had weapons you don't find in other shooters. The game makes you feel like you're painting with these weapons. I know that it's ink, but the ink is similar to paint. It doesn't help that there is a paint roller for a weapon. I don't know what it is about Splatoon that I love so much. It could be because of the fandom creating all the great content from art, animation, and more. It's the only game I'm competitive in, but I'm not a pro player or a casual player either. I'm in the middle area and I know a good amount of info on the game. I've been here from the start with the Fwitter off the hook and now deep cut. I often find myself on the website Inkopedia, watching IPL Splatoon tournament and others on Twitch, and of course I watch the Splatoon Direct. However, unlike everyone in the Splatoon community, I wasn't saying let go every minute or doing that stupid Paul Jam fade during the Direct. And making Splatoon video, putting my faith in the thumbnail, doing that Paul Chan faith, or my faith being blurred, showing that I'm happy for something. The premiere mode for this game is Turf War. A 3 minute battle where players ain't the most turf. The mode is a good showcase for the type of game it wants to be. The theory had a story and lore, event every month and more with the good the bad and what is she wearing i welcome you to the colorful world of platoon you arrive at ink opulent you hear the news that the great staff fish is gone captain cuttlefish tells you the evil Octarians are behind the kidnapping. And he made you an agent. Agent free. Later, Cuttlefish is kidnapped by DJ Octavio, the final boss. Agent free meets up with Callie and Marie, who are worried about the captain. Agent free reaches the final boss to stop his plan and win. The final thing about the story is the last Blackfest. The last theme was Callie first and Marie, and Marie was the winner. You arrive at a new plaza, and you hear the news that the great Daffish is gone again. But that's not all. Callie had gone missing. Marie tells you that the evil Altarians are behind the kidnapping and asks for your help making you Agent 4. You learn that Callie had been brainwashed and had been warning you to stop fighting. Poor Regent Octavio with Callie. Marie snapped Callie out of it and returned her back to normal. With Callie back to normal, you take down the final boss. You play at an octoling with no memory and are lost in a subway. Cuttlefish is tagging along with you. He was traveling with Agent Free, but they got that apart. A telephone tells you a way out and about who you are, but Cuttlefish called you Agent 8 for short. To reach the promised land, you need to collect four objects, but they look familiar. Once you collect all four, they are combined into a blender? It's a trap! In the nick of time, Free showed up and rescued you, but he or she is knocked out cold. The final fade is all but left for Agent 8. During one of the faded, 
something happened to Free and Cuttlefish. And right before the end, you fight against a brainwashed agent Free and turn him or her back to normal. You finally made it and meet up with Off the Hook. But one more thing to take care of. With nothing else to lose, the telephone who called himself Commander Tartar tried to destroy all of Inkopolis. The arena comes up with a plan to stop him with the help of A and Pearl. You put the plan into action and complete it. And with that, you save all of Inkopolis. Before we head into number 3, I have to talk about the final event. Even though the last one was the Super Mario one, the last theme was Chaos vs. Order. The winner of the event would alter Platoon going forward. And the winner was Chaos. Chaos. You arrive in a new town and, uh, the great starfish is gone again. Oh shit, here we go again. A retired cuttlefish asks for your help, calling you Agent Free. You have a small fry or little buddy who isn't here just to be cute. I'm going to call him Bob, because there's always room for a Bob. Quickly, you come against Octavio and you beat him easily. However, he is not behind all of this. After the battle, the ground beneath you break and everyone falls. You find yourself in this new world. You meet up with the previous agent and the old agent free is now the new captain. You meet Deep Cut, who are bandit and the new idol. You learn that Mr. Grid is behind all of this. I... Wait, him? I know Mr. Grid is shady, but he's evil? And not like a bad boss that you were for evil, but evil evil? I'm going to kill that bear. With the help of everyone, you stop Mr. Grid and save the world. All the Splatoon campaign teach you how to play the game and prepare for online battles. Flat 1 and 2 levels are traditional. Get to the gold level with the right amount of difficulty. The auto campaign is more difficult than the other. With levels, you have to beat without getting hit with ink playing pool with 8 balls and breaking boxes to match a shape like a dog. But I wouldn't put the auto campaign in the same category as Ninja Gaiden or Cuphead. If you die a lot and you will, the game will allow you to skip a level. If you want to 100% the game, you have to beat all the levels with your own skill. Flat free levels are close to the auto campaign, but without high difficulty. You don't have to play all the levels to beat the game. Just like the auto campaign. From the start, the game tricked you into believing it to be traditional levels. The levels are fun, and I like them minus a few. But I was hoping for something new or open world. These are events where players pick between two options in the older title, while Black 3 has three options. All battles are turf wars, with everyone adding to a total. They did make them good ones mostly in the crossover area. Black 1 did a Transformers event. One event to celebrate the release of Pokemon Red and Blue for the 3DS eShop and a bunch 
Bob event? Could you imagine if they did this for Splatoon 3 and the amount of me people would make? But then again, when had that stopped anyone from making a SpongeBob reference? Okay, let's pop the Rainmaker. Aw oh, man, maybe it won't go into overtime? OVERTIME! In Flat 2, the event lasted for two years. We got a few repeats and a Super Mario event when everyone believed Flatfest were dead. Players were given a Smash event, America and Europe got a Ninja Turtles event, while Japan got a Hello Kitty one. Japan also got the Pocky event and a McDonald's event? Um, wouldn't America get that one? Do you know how many we have over here? Yeah, the one thing all Splatoon players hate. If your internet is less than average or poor, it's hard to say if Splatoon is right for you. Because Splatoon is heavily focused on multiplayer. You could be missing half or more than half of the game if you keep disconnecting. Not to mention, the Fluid Party problem, they become a problem when people do it in a public lobby. It does not matter the mode, what level you are, or what rank you do them in, it's not okay with everyone. We all want to have fun in some way, but please do Fluid Party in private lobby so you don't bother other players. But, what if someone who had poor internet can't play locally and keep disconnecting? The only battle or two this person get is a free party for the day. It does for that person. I'm saying all of this to make everyone understand or aware. So please, let's understand each other. Are we okay? Are we woomy? Are we FEMO? All games are similar in a way to each other, but with differences and game feel. All games offer the Turf War mode as mentioned earlier in the video, rank mode, and a way to buy items. Each weapon kit in every game is different, mostly due to the special you can use. I'm not going to talk about the multiplayer in the first game, because I feel 2 and 3 do a better job with the multiplayer option and quality of life features. If you do, I have to warn you, the first game had a hacking problem. Flat 2 offered more options, ranked and lead battled with 4 different modes and diamond run. In tower control, one player get on a tower to make it move. While one person is on the tower, the other player defend their teammate on the tower by attacking their foe or moving them away from the tower and fight further. In Blackstone, players need to ink one or two areas to take control. If Team B take control after Team A, Team A is given a penalty and had to work their time out of it when taking control back over. In Rainmaker, players must first break the shield around it. One person had to pick it up and take it to the enemy goal. 
The Rainmaker Carrier looted the ability to use their main, sub, and special. However, the Rainmaker is not useless. It can make one powerful attack that can ink a good amount of ground and smaller shots as well. And clam the new mode. Uh Okay, Bill, not yet. Players need to grab 10 clam to form a power clam. You throw the power clam to break the opponent's shield around the basket on the other side of the map. Once the shield is down, you and your team need to throw clam in the opponent's basket for more points to keep the shield from recovering. Once the shield is back up, the opposite team get a power clam or pity clam to fight back. You know the rules and so do I. However, I feel people don't know how to play this mode even at a high ranking. And I mean the simple rules and not any type of a fan technique. Or maybe I get a lot of questionable teammates in this mode for solo play. No matter how someone would reword or switch the opinion of Clamblit, I feel a lot of people will never like the mode. But I can't explain why in this video. Not to say other modes don't have their share of a painful headache. The only type of communication you have is on a D-pad. It's okay in other modes, but in Clam, it's not enough. Clam is a mode made to be played with people using real communication, working out the biggest problem with the mode. Two issues I think some people will have with Clam are defense and waiting. Defense is something a lot of my teammates forget about or just lack. If your team defense is poor, your enemy will get into your bait and score without effort. But the worst part for some people is the waiting game. Clam is the only mode where it can last a long time or the whole match before anyone scores. And the sad part is that I don't even know where the problem with Clam Blitz stop. Dominant Run is one of my favorite modes in Flat 2. You fight free waves against AI Dalman. Everyone needs to work as a team to get the job done. Every wave is random with different events like Water Leveled, Fog, and the Mothership. You're given a new weapon for every round and two special to meet the quota for each wave before the time runs out. If you win, you get a raid and more points for your daily bonus. And watch your team do whatever at the end. Dominant Run had wildcard or random rotation. These rotations are when you have a chance to try out a rare and powerful weapon. Sometimes rare weapon only rotations will happen, where it's nothing but using a rare weapon after another one. I have put so much time into this one mode. I know what to do in every event. I beat hazard level math multiple times. Played every rotation before Black 3, made it to the highest level, and know how every weapon it used. Well, in my own way. Because some weapons like the Ink Brush and Dynamo Roller are a pain to work with. All the modes from Splatoon 2 return for Splatoon 3, but with more or different features, along with new modes and new move to help in battle. Turf War and Blackstone are the same with nothing new. Clam had a player collect 8 Clam to make a Power Clam, not 10. 
Otto claimed to appear three at a time and not four. Rainmaker now had checkpoint. You have to use one checkpoint before taking the Rainmaker to the goal. Because you will not get extra point for doing so. In Flat 2, all players have four different rank for each rank mode. In Flat 3, all players just have one rank and it counts for all the rank mode. Do you know what this means? I never have to play Clamp ever again. Yes! That's great, but what happened with showing other players leveled and rank? Diamond Run is back and I couldn't be happier. But don't tell Bob. The mode is now available 24-7. It's the same idea, but with modern AI, new bosses, new events, and harder difficulty. One thing you can do now is throw your egg. This is helpful when you're in a pinch or for the giant tornado event. You may get a chance to fight the king of all Salmon in the extra wave, you need to beat other bosses to get a golden egg to shoot at the king for more damage. And be careful not to die. If you fail, everyone still get a raid for beating the free wave. So don't worry too much about not winning the extra wave. This new Salmon run is fun, but something is off. The stuff that I could do in Flat 2 are not here. I can't put my finger on it. It's like the weapon got nerfed or the game feel. Or maybe a lot of people are not used to the harder difficulty. I don't know. Here is what I do know. Some specials like the Killer Well 5.1 can't replace the Stingray power and control for me. All fry can kill you in free hit now. And oh, the frame rate in this mode is not great when a lot is going on. Table Turf Battle is a new mode. It turf war, but in card form. Tri Color Battle is the other new mode. It only appeared after the halfway point in the flat fed. It turf war, however, it's a 4 32 32 battle. The team in the lead with a full team had to fight off the other two teams with two players each. The team with two players have to get an ultra signal to help them ink the turf they cannot ink due to their short number. The problem with the mode is that it happened at random and had a low chance. The winning team doesn't get to choose the mode. If you do have the option to pick, there is a high chance the game will put you into a turf war match. Not the tricolor match. I can understand why they throw you into a normal battle, but I don't like how did it set up. The amount of options you have for your character in Flat Free is quite good. The game doesn't use the word gender. The game used the word style for body type or gender, not boy or girl. However, gender is still within the game. But I can tell the difference between the male and female character, like with the cut eyebrow and the voice that they make. All hair and legwear are not locked behind a gender. I wish the hair were added a bit. For example, if the female option on the male had a small edit to make it look a bit different from the female and vice versa or something like that, but that is just me. I don't like how it all copy and paste from the previous game, but I can't lie. 
the female with original long hair and flat to short hair on my male inkling look nice. I kind of like it. You can buy new gear and more from a shop to help you in battle. But I don't like the new guy Mr. Coco. He looked like he would tear me a new one. The game had even more customization. You have victory emote, name tag option, a locker you can edit, and much more. One of the most helpful people of all is merch. You can order gear from another player and the phone app. You can use Super Snail to reroll abilities and boot your gear star power. You can use money to shrub ability pieces and use ability pieces you get from different means and add them to gear. Platoon 3 offered a lot of customization, different game modes, and more. And that's great! However, something had been annoying me. I didn't realize the problem in Platoon 2. And Platoon 3 made me realize the biggest and worst thing about the game. Why do most life surface games or modern games have to use some type of grinding? In Splatoon, you have to grind your level, grind your rank, grind for money, grind ability pieces, grind your gear, and grind for super snails. Due to Splatoon 3, it grinding the catalog and grinding for shells and lightnesses to get new weapons. If this game had nuts, we'll be grinding them as well. It doesn't help that the game had a FOMO moment with the catalog that you can't pick what you want and gotcha stuff with this machine. I'm glad the game is handled by Nintendo and not, you know, not to say Nintendo is not guilty of this. Yes. I know this game is a live service and doesn't have microtransactions and all of this stuff is cosmetic. Splatoon is not the only live service game out there. But I have stuff to do and other games to play. If a game had optional content or stuff to collect or to do, don't make it a pain. How the game does gear and flash free. Compared to the other games, they're great, but they had to mess that up too. To upgrade your gear, you have to use Super Snail or money. Here's the problem. The only way to get nailed in Flash Free is by playing Flash Fed. If you only use Snail to fully upgrade, it would take at least 35 of them for one piece of gear. You will have to grind your flashback title up to ruler the highest ranking in two events just to fully upgrade one piece of gear. As for you the money, that's a problem too. Shops that sell gear are limited in number and it's random what shows up. If you don't see the gear you want to upgrade, you have to wait a whole real life day before doing it all over again and i'm not even sure if it even worth it the fully upgraded gear only goes up by the little the game need to start giving out free snails like candy on halloween battles and diamond run need to give even more money give people more snails after flat fed without doing more grinding, or the amount of snails or money for upgrading need to be lowered. Oh, one more thing. The rank reset mechanic and at battle. And I'm using info from Inkopedia. Every three months, your rank in Anarchy Battles will drop. If a player wants to play an at battle coming Soon, they will have to get a rank of at plus 10 and keep in mind your rank starts at at plus 
zero, which means more grinding. No! No! I'm aware I didn't talk about or explain everything and had some opinion, but I still love Splatoon. While Splatoon 3 is fun and all, the game needs to do something about all the grinding and work out some issues I have heard about. Of course, the game will get more content and updates for the next two years. Not sure what content it will be. I can't talk about something that is not here. I hope you all had fun watching. But one more thing I have to say. We all wish Big Man was real because we all want to hug him. Who doesn't want to hug him? And you know you want to hug him. Don't lie to me.